Hello, my name is Phil Caton, an engineer with Intel. Today, I'm going to be discussing managing exported NVMe over Fabrics resources and fabrics in Swordfish and Redfish. First, we're going to have a brief slide on what is NVMe over Fabrics and how you could use it. Just a one page reminder to bring everyone up to scale. Then, We'll talk about, well, with all the goodness of NVMe over fabrics, why all the fuss about managing NVMe over fabrics resources? Then we'll discuss what we're going to do about it and how you can help. NVMe over fabrics maps and extends NVMe's storage performance and latency benefits. It enables scaling NVMe out and across network fabrics, such as TCP and fiber channel and InfiniBand and Rocky. The list goes on. NVMe over Fabrics provides a higher IOPS and a reduced latency from the host software stack through the data fabric and to backend storage. Recently, there was a sea change in the NVMe over Fabrics specification. It morphed into a combination of specifications. The NVMe over Fabrics protocol is now found in a combination of the NVMe 2.0 base specification and the NVMe transport specifications. Today, NVMe or Fabrics delivers a new level of performance for business critical applications. NVMe or Fabrics enables shared storage at speeds that rival direct attached storage. It enables building of virtual storage systems from a variety of components on the storage network. It enables composable, pooled, disaggregated, flexible storage with increased utilization efficiency. NVMe or Fabrics significantly increases the agility and the flexibility in how enterprises provision and optimize their data center infrastructure to meet dynamic application requirements. NVM Express has become the language of storage and NVMe over fabrics opens up new possibilities for high performance computing and clouds for what you can expect from workloads and use cases which use very large and distributed data sets. For instance, big data analytics and predictive modeling, large volume online transaction processing, and artificial intelligence and machine learning, the list goes on. Any application that uses large distributed data sets in a dynamic scaled out data center environment. So why all the fuss about managing NVMe or fabrics? With all the promise of NVMe or fabrics with all the new capabilities and high speed and low latency, why the conversation and effort around managing NVMe over fabrics? Well, prior to hosts being able to connect and use remote NVMe or fabrics storage resources, those resources must be enumerated. Those resources must be configured and provisioned to hosts with appropriate individual access policies as needed. When an administrator wants to expose NVMe resources over fabrics, the administrator must individually configure and assign namespace resources to each exported NVM subsystem. And Fabrics connected storage resources require configuring and assigning each exported NVM subsystem with the fabric, fabric transports, assigning each in exported NVM subsystems with a way that a host could access those resources over Fabrics. And in addition, some use cases require setting up individual access rights to each exported NVM subsystem to uh, provision user access, either globally or to specific hosts or host groups. And when an exported NVM subsystem or its associated resources or volumes are no longer needed, administrators must individually deprovision the exported resources so they underlying NVM resources may be recovered and then go through the process of recovery and possibly sanitizing those resources. And each individual resource must be reconfigured each time anything changes. When drives are added to a target system or dot drives fail or are otherwise removed, when fabrics devices or paths to get between consumers of resources and the actual resources change, or, or data set requirements change, or workloads or workload access requirements or policies changes. And this administrative overhead presents a scalability and a flexibility issue for NVMe and NVMe or fabrics, especially in complex and dynamic installations with hundreds of target nodes supporting thousands of storage resources where the workloads and the maybe the data sets vary 
where infrastructure and systems and fabric devices and storage devices change. And static configurations, they lack flexibility. Um, manual configuration and administration means going to each system, determining what storage and fabric resources it has, and then using administrative commands and tools to individually uh, configure each resource on that system. And then going back to each system and individually reconfiguring them as needed. Uh, similar to how configuring iSCSI uh, works really, and this decreases practical scalability, really. In addition, uh, a lack of common logical resource creation and management capabilities for NVMe or fabrics has led to a proliferation of vendor-specific tools. This limits interoperability and common configuration mechanisms for exported NVMe resources. And typically, proprietary tools only work in homogeneous environments, which leads to single vendor solutions or in heterogeneous installations having to support and use multiple management applications. And this limits the usability and flexibility and scale of dynamic installations of NVMe and limits the potential of NVMe or fabrics. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, to support large scale and dynamic deployments of NVMe over fabrics, we need to do more. We need scalable and dynamic configuration, management, and provisioning at a data center level and scale. We need standardized and much more efficient methods to take back in storage, no matter what it looks like or where it comes from, and virtualize it to abstract it as needed for remote consumers. We need to present layered block storage as exported NVMe namespaces with consumer access rights as needed. And DMTF Redfish and SNEA Swordfish standards are growing to comprehend NVMe and NVMe or fabrics. They already define and configure and manage data center resources, but now DM DMTF and SNEA and NVMe experts are adding comprehensive scalable storage profiles to Swordfish to manage NVMe and NVMe or fabric storage resources. And together, this provides a one-stop shop to manage all the data center resources. Otherwise, you get an incomplete or inefficient solution if you must manage NVMe and NVMe or fabrics through other sets of tools. So let's dive into how SNEA and DMTF and the NVMe consortium are working to make this happen. So if we start with local NVMe resources and objects, the, the picture on the right represents an, an NVM name uh, subsystem. It's got an administrative controller. It's got some number of IO controllers and it's got some number of namespaces identified by namespace IDs that can be accessed. So let's look at how we would map NVMe namespaces onto fabrics. So the picture on the left shows how we can represent NVMe and NVMe or fabrics to build data center storage as layered constructs to enable a common framework for NVMe and NVMe or fabrics to dynamically construct and configure and provision exported NVM subsystems as logical aggregations of underlying physical resources, if you will. If we consider underlying storage resources in VME namespaces, for instance, as landlords and logical virtualized resources in VME or fabrics resources as tenants in a landlord tenant environment, sort of a infrastructure as a service cloud, if you will. The landlord owns underlying resources. It controls and configures all aspects of the underlying resources, for instance, the capacities of the volumes. The landlord is then able to export NVM subsystems to each tenant. They're providing each tenant with separate non-interfering scopes of management, namely her own exported NVM subsystems. And the picture on the left shows this. If you see, you have back in storage, which is represented by the volumes that are accessible and exportable. And then you have an, a list of all, all the possible namespaces you might want to export. You create an NVMe or fabrics subsystem you provision it with a link to or a virtual representation of those backend uh, volumes. You 
assign it an, a way to be accessed over fabrics. And then you may choose to have this unrestricted. So any, any consumer can access this NVMe or fabric subsystem, or you may choose to restrict it to certain access nodes or to certain consumers. Now, these are virtual storage constructs that lay on top of physical instances of storage. The backend storage doesn't have to be an NVMe SSD. They, it could be other things. It could be a rotational drive. This backend storage could represent actual further uh, NVMe or fabric drives that this particular target is a, is a host to. These could be namespaces that have been merged or rated or in other ways represented to the NVMe or Fabrics uh, administrator so, that, so they can represent them and provision them to NVMe or Fabrics subsystems. This simply shows what it looks like on top of NVMe. And we're representing this back in storage with an NVMe front end. And what this means is we have a common interface for all storage, either internal or remote, which simplifies life for users. The NVMe Consortium is developing standardized mechanisms to enable a framework for configuration and management to export NVMe resources. The list below, which I'll get to in a moment, are necessary administrative functions under consideration and being tracked through the NVM Express technical proposal process to enable this. And these management mechanisms are needed to efficiently enable the landlord-tenant relationship we just spoke about and to enable efficient standardized configuration and management of NVMe or Fabrics resources. You have mechanisms to get a list of available storage resources to find out what, what NVMe uh, namespaces are available, to get a list of ports for what NVMe over Fabrics transports are available on that particular target machine. We have mechanisms to enable creation and deletion of exported NVM subsystems, uh, to provision essentially linking namespaces to NVM subsystems. Those NVMe over fabrics uh, subsystems now have volumes. They have namespaces that can be accessed over fabrics. And to manage the exported transport configuration for how do you want to represent these over fabrics? Do you want this NVMe or fabric subsystem to be accessed through say a, a TCP fabric or a fiber channel fabric or both? And of course, you want to be able to manage host access rights to exported subsystems. Now, SNE Scalable Storage Management Technical Working Group is working in parallel with NVMe to use this framework to enable scalable storage management at a data center scale. And let's look into that. As you can see in this picture, the orange boxes are, are very the same objects as you saw in the previous slides. They are the objects that represent, represent NVMe and NVMe or fabrics. And what we're doing here is leveraging the existing Redfish and Swordfish models. We want to map the NVMe or fabrics objects onto Redfish and Swordfish to replicate the NVMe and NVMe or fabrics model. And this enables configuration of logical representations of NVMe resources or fabrics, and therefore enable efficient management of NVMe or fabrics. And let's dive into this. Look. What does this look like in, in Swordfish? If we discuss how we represent the previous picture in Redfish and Swordfish, here's a mockup hierarchy for mapping components of NVMe over fabrics onto Redfish and Swordfish. We have the Redfish and Swordfish model here with chassis and fabrics and domains and storage, and resources are layered into their respective collections. This shows how various fabric related resources under an instance called NVMe or fabrics, and we'll go into, into a couple of examples for managing an NVMe or fabrics subsystem. So this is the representation of NVMe or Fabrics subsystem. You can see that we have the, the name of the, of the system. It's just an unimaginative logical NVM or Fabrics system. It shows, it shows the status. This is an enabled with a healthy, uh, with a healthy NVMe or Fabrics subsystem. It shows the identifiers that uniquely identify this subsystem for remote host to access. There's the controllers that are, that are created for this NVMe or Fabrics subsystem. And here are the volumes that this NVMe or fabric subsystem has been provisioned. We'll go into that in a few slides. In addition, you have the endpoints that have been configured for this NVMe or fabric subsystem. Again, we'll go into that in a few moments. And we have the connections for how this, this subsystem can be accessed. 
if we talk about provisioning logical namespaces, you see that this subsystem has been provisioned with some number of subs, uh, some number of namespaces, and this is one of the namespaces. This shows the the vol, uh, the, log, the data uh, I, O data ID shows the namespace has been provisioned to the NVMe or Fabric subsystem we're discussing about. It shows the name and the identif identifier of the namespace, and it shows some of the information about an exported NVMe namespace, such as the status. Now you could have other other information about this particular namespace, but this is a distinct subset of the information about the backing storage, the underlying namespace resources, which will have a lot more information. And then this shows the path to the underlying uh, NVM resource, the backend storage. It's shown detached through the capacity sources and providing pools. Now, how the underlying backend namespaces are attached and represented in the storage fish hierarchy, it's a bit of a work in process, but this is, this is how it's going. You will be able to go from the volumes list to the actual namespaces in that list of, of volumes that are revisioned for the NVMe or Fabric subsystem. And then you'll be able to go and find the actual backend storage. So let's talk about the next stage. We want to provision the, the connections. If we go into there, and these are, again, examples. Uh, here's an example of, I want to provide unrestricted read-write access to this particular subsystem in all its volumes. And it's unrestricted to any particular initiator and unrestricted to any particular target endpoint. And what that means is any host that can find this NVMe or Fabric subsystem is allowed to access it. And they are allowed to access this NVMe or Fabric subsystem over any of the Fabric paths that it's configured for. Now, the empty list of initiators and endpoints are unnecessary if you're really not restricting this to, to this particular list of initiators or particular fabric paths. They're just here for illustration. This is perfectly valid syntax, but you don't need it here if it's an unrestricted list. Let's go into another example. For instance, if we want to restrict this NVMe or fabric subsystem and its volumes uh, to read only, and we want to restrict it to only a, a small number of hosts, for instance, host two and host three we have here, and you want to restrict access again to a specific path that this particular NVMe or Fabric subsystem has been uh, configured for, you would have a file that looked a lot like this. You'd say read only, you'd say I want only these hosts to be able to access this NVMe or Fabric subsystem and only on this Fabric path. Again, these are examples. You wouldn't necessarily have you know, both of these in the same system. Uh, restrictions or orders of restrictions could be implementation specific, but I just wanted to illustrate how it would look if you wanted to institute certain policies. And then let's go into how you would access an NVMe or Fabrics subsystem over a Fabric, how you would configure that. And here we are with the endpoints. And if you see a couple of files here, you'll see here's one where we have an endpoint that's connected to an NVMe or Fabric subsystem. We show the connected entities showing that for this particular target, this is the network controller for this particular fabrics configuration. And you can say, okay, well, here again is the unique identifier for this subsystem that you're gonna access over fabrics. And you can access it in this particular configuration file over Rocky V2 with this address, with this port. And you might have several of these showing that this NVMe or fabric subsystem is accessible over several fabric paths. So what are we doing about it? Well, as we've shown, there is quite a bit of work in progress to enable standardized scale-out management of NVMe or fabrics. The NVMe, cons NVMe consortium is developing standardized mechanisms to enable a framework for configuration management for exporting NVMe resources. And SNEA is working in parallel with NVMe to use this framework to enable scalable storage management in the data center. SNEA is verifying the modeling of NVMe and the fabric components and making sure it's complete within the Redfish and Swordfish models. And it's producing schema and mockups and enhanced mapping guides. And it's publishing a compliance test program, compliant open source industry straw man demonstration and reference platform. I'll get to that on the next slide. For more information uh, on using Swordfish to implement NVMe fabrics, ma NVMe management, please watch Curtis Ballard's presentation. And the, the distributed endpoint manager in an open source uh, SNEA Swordfish compliant test program, compliant open source reference implementation of an NVMe or Fabrics management suite. Uh, it has an HTTP front end, which implements a Swordfish RESTful interface to NVMe or Fabrics targets. 
It enables configuration and provisioning of NVMe or Fabrics resources via a RESTful interface. And it complies, as I say, with the SNE Swordfish Conformance Test Program. Uh, there is a presentation. Raja Lakshmi is going to present Accelerating NVMe and NVMe or Fabrics, Redfish and Swordfish Development Using DEM. And she'll give you a, an in-depth discussion for the components and capabilities of the DEM, which is this diagram here, which shows the components. She'll have a, a demonstration of the management suite and she'll talk about how you can get it, how you can use it, how you can help contribute and help it grow. And where to find more info. SNEA is really always looking for more voices, for more thoughts, for more leaders in the industry to come help. So there's a link to the Swordfish standards, the Swordfish specification forum, to the scalable storage management twig, where there's a lot of folks that are very active in discussing how Swordfish is going to grow for scalable storage management. And we really want folks to join the SNEA storage management initiative. In addition, there's the, the DMTF Redfish standards. There's NVM Express with the specifications and how to join. And this is uh, one of the cousin projects to the SNEA Swordfish project. This is the Open Fabrics Management Framework, uh, which is mostly run by the Open Fabrics Alliance. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen. Please take a moment to rate this session. The feedback is very important. Thank you. <laughs>